Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is run through three common types of questions that you get on the nature of the roots of a quadratic equation. And I'm assuming that you've watched the previous video on the discriminant. So for this video, we've got three questions here. And you might, in fact, want to pause the video and have a go at these yourself. But for the first one, we've got kx squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. And we've got to find the value of k for which it has equal roots. So to do this, for equal roots, remember the discriminant, which is given by b squared minus 4ac. That has to equal 0. And b, in this case, is minus 4. So we would therefore have minus 4 all squared, minus the 4, multiplied by a. a is the coefficient of x squared, which is k. And then we've got c, which is the constant at the end here, 1. And that would equal 0. And if we clean this up, what we've got here is minus 4k. And here we've got 16. So if I add 4k to both sides, I end up with 4k equaling 16. And from that, if we divide both sides by 4, it follows that k equals 16 divided by 4, which is 4. And just to prove that we get one root, if we were to use the quadratic formula when k equals 4, then to get x, remember x would be given by minus b, so it's going to be minus minus 4, which would be 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Well, we know that comes to 0, so you've got essentially the square root of 0, and that's all divided by 2a, so that would be 2 times the value of k, which is 4. And if you work this out, you find that x equals just 4 divided by 8, because square root of 0 is obviously 0. So 4 divided by 8 gives you a half. Now here I've drawn the graph of y equals kx squared minus 4x plus 1, where k equals 4. So in other words, we've got the graph then of y equals 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And notice how we've got the one root here. And that value is x equals a half, or 0 0.5. And if I reduce the value of k down to 3.5, notice what happens to the curve. We're getting two roots, two intersections then with the x-axis. And that would mean that the discriminant was always positive if you took values of k less than 4. If I take k back up, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4 again, the one root, increase it to 4.5, notice how the curve now does not intersect the x-axis, so there'll be no real roots if k is more than 4. k is 5, 5.5, and so on. In cases like this, the discriminant would be negative, so giving us no solution. Let's take it back down to k equaling 4 then, just to show you that one real root of 0.5. So in summary, what we can see then is that when k equals 4, the equation then has just one root and it is a half. Now in the next question, we've got the quadratic equation x squared plus 6x plus k equals 0, and we've got to find the value of k for which it has no real roots. So the discriminant then, b squared minus 4ac, well that's got to be negative, in other words, less than 0. And taking a then to be 1, b to be 6, and c to be k, we therefore have, for b squared, 6 squared, and then we've got minus 4 times a, a is 1, times c, which is k, and that has got to be less than 0. So we've got 36 here, minus 4k is less than 0. So if I add 4k to both sides, I therefore have 36 is less than 4k. 
and then if I divide both sides by 4 I get 9 is less than k or I could reverse that round and therefore I've got k must be greater than 9. Now if we look at the graph of y equals x squared plus 6x plus k and here I've taken k to be equal to 11, so this is y equals x squared plus 6x plus 11. You can see that we've got no roots. The curve does not intersect the x-axis. But if I reduce the value of k down to 10.5, notice how the curve moves down. Still no roots. k equals 10. k equals 9.5. Now when I get k equals 9, we end up with one real root. In fact, it's x equals minus 3. When k is less than 9, now 8.5, notice how we get two real roots. Bring it down further, 8, still two real roots, and so on. So we can see that when k is greater than 9, we end up with no real roots. So again I've summarized this here we've got the graph of y equals x squared plus 6x plus k and when k is greater than 9 you can see we have no real roots and when it does equal 9 you can see that we've got the one root x equals minus 3. Now in the last question here we've got the quadratic equation x squared plus kx plus 9 equals 0 and we've got to find the value of k then for which it has different roots. So for this then the discriminant b squared minus 4ac well that's got to be positive greater than 0 and if that's the case taking a to be 1, b to be k and c to be 9 we therefore have that k all squared for b squared minus 4 times a which is 1 times c which is 9 that's got to be greater than 0. So therefore what we've got here is k squared minus 36 has got to be greater than 0. Now to solve a quadratic inequality like this we factorize it and this is the difference of two squares so therefore we're going to have the two brackets k minus 6 multiplied with k plus 6 and that's going to be greater than 0. Then we need to look at the critical values, the CVs if you like. Okay, These are the values of k which would make this equal to 0. So that would lead to k minus 6 equaling 0 or k plus 6 equaling 0 and that would then lead on to k equaling then plus or minus 6. Then I'd look at sketching a graph where we have the axis here which is k. I'd put my critical values down, one at minus 6 and the other one at 6. And if I was to plot, say, the graph of y equals k squared minus 36, it's going to look something like this, a positive parabola crossing through minus 6 there and going up through the 6 there. And I'll be looking for where this is greater than 0, where it's above the k-axis. And I can see that's going to be for values of k more than 6 and for values of k less than minus 6. So therefore if we come back over here we can see that from the graph k must be less than minus 6 or k must be greater than 6. Now if we look at the graph in general of y equals x squared plus kx plus 9 then when k equals minus 7 you'll notice we get this graph here and it's got two roots one here and one here. As I increase the value of k, now it is minus 6.5, the curve moved up but it still has two roots, one here and one here. Now when k equals minus 6, you'll notice we don't have different roots, we just have 
one real root. So when k is less than minus 6, now it's minus 6.5, now minus 7, we're getting those two different roots. But we said that k could be greater than 6 as well. So let's take the value of k up and see what happens. So k is minus 7, minus 6.5, minus 6, just one root. Now it's minus 5.5 and we get no roots. And as we keep increasing the value of k, you'll notice how the curve moves. Now when k equals 0, it crosses the y-axis here at 9. And still increasing k, 0.51, see what happens to the curve. Still has no real roots. Now as we head towards 6, notice how the curve has one real root. Increase k now from 6 to 6.5. We've now got two real roots. k equals 7. Still two real roots. And so again, in summary, you can see that if we take the graphs of y equals x squared plus kx plus 9 for various values of k, when k is greater than 6 and when k is less than minus 6, the graphs show that you get two different roots. And when k equals 6 or k equals minus 6, then you just get one root. Those roots would be minus 3 and 3 respectively. So that brings us now to the end of this tutorial and I hope it's given you some idea then how you can go about handling questions like this.